this week on Carolina All Out. Up in the mountains, ice around, it's awesome. I think we got a deer on the ground. Let's go take a look and see what we got. Appreciate it so much, Nathan. Yes, sir, Chris. We started in the mountains and now we're headed back to our hometown. We are in an urban setting here during the North Carolina urban archery season. Crossbows and uptown whitetails. This is Carolina All Out. Fall is here and the All Out crew is deer hunting in Allegheny County, which is experiencing some unusual winter weather that has suppressed the deer movement. So the crew heads over to good friend Sid Carrier's house to warm up and prepare for the afternoon hunt. Well, as you can see, we are inside right now, outside is ice. Allegheny County has taken on an ice storm. Sid, you, I don't think think we've had anything like this for a while we here. I haven't seen anything like this in years. It's been it's been a long time. I know what we aren't doing and that is hunting and what I needed to do is shoot this CBA Acura MR, MR standing for mountain rifle. Awesome muzzle loader and I'm really excited about it. this is the first year we've shot this one. So we've got it here at, at Sid's shop and we're going to shoot it up here at 100 yards and see what it does but a lot of fun to be had here in the mountains of North Carolina. It's just cool up here. We're getting there. We're getting there. You can see how dirty we're getting doing this thing, but it's muzzleloader shooting and it's fun. And uh, I appreciate Sid letting us do this because it's great. Up in the mountains, ice around, it's awesome. <laughs> It was a terrible weather situation out there, but we started noticing that the sun started coming out and Nathan knew of a few places that we could slip into the stand later that afternoon. And so we decided to do a little scouting. Nathan, it's the last day of the Northwestern region muzzleloader season. And we're on an awful beautiful farm coming in here. What is this place? Sure is, Chris. This is about a 300 acre farm we have in here. Um, it's grown up with white pine, so there's a lot of good bedding area for a lot of the deer here. Sure is. Um, right now, we're trying to manage our doe population, so um, that, that's certainly something that uh, we're hoping you guys can help us out with. Well, I got tags for it, I can tell you that, and I'm telling you, I, you, it looks like it would be awesome with the way these pines are in there and all the dog fennel and all those weeds are in between. It looks like it'd be an awesome place for them to bed. Now, what are we going to be hunting over? Are we in food plots or what are we? Yeah, we've planted buck forest oats out here in our food plots, so we've got a good selection for them coming and going. So hopefully we'll catch these does coming into these food plots feeding here this afternoon. Well, I think we should probably get to it. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Stay tuned for more Carolina All Out. Carolina All Out is brought to you by the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission. Go hunt, go fish, go wild. Carolina Cooker Cast Iron Cookware, a tradition born in the South. XGO, those who know, wear XGO. Montgomery Community College, educating since 1967. Browning, the best there is. New Sports Shop, we've got the gear. And by Farms and Land Realty. Selling land is what we do. 
Don't go away. There's more Carolina All Out coming up. Hello, my name is Craig Harper, and I'm here at New Sports Shop in Kinston, and today I'd like to talk to you about wildlife management, especially about planting food plots and minerals. We have a wide variety of product, whether you're looking to plant in the spring or in the fall, that will help benefit that wildlife that you have on your properties. Whether you're looking to plant some larger areas in the spring and the summertime with the beans, with the power plant is a great option on that gives you good coverage, good protein, good attractant for your deer even hunting into the fall, to whether you want to do a perennial where you get three to five years out of that one planting. Between your clover and your chicory, Whitetail Institute has a great product lineup for those perennial uh, selections that you have. In the spring of the year when the deer are starting to put their antler growth back on, when the does are starting to drop their phones, we need to be putting something out to help benefit that herd. A great product that we have here at New Sports Shop is the Lucky Buck product. It's a mineral that we would put out to kind of help with the mass growth on that, that buck and help with those lactating does in the spring. So whether you're wanting to go with the budget, with the lower, lower, smaller food plot or to the larger size food plots, stop by New Sports Shop. We have your food plot needs and we'd be glad to help you. Okay, I know we're doe hunting here, but I always love to see this kind of stuff when I'm walking in the deer woods. You see a lot of different size tracks in it. I can smell it. It's on a three-way, different directions coming in here, headed that way because of all the way the tracks are. It's just one of those things that I love to see in the deer woods, and you've got to pay attention to it all the time. But look at there, there's an old old ladder stand right there. A guy knew what he was doing back in the day because this probably ain't the first time there's been a scrape right here. Anyway, I'm gonna head on down and we're gonna see if we can get set in for the night. We are in a white pine plantation and what's happened is they've pushed three lanes out and they planted two of these lanes in but four Joe's. And so as you can see from this young buck, he's really enjoying these oats. Um, it's just a nice setup. Um, deer feel secure in these narrow food plots. They can step up to the edge, look out, step out, eat, and can be in the brush if any thing comes along, any, anything that alarms them. So they feel really secure in these tight places. It's almost like shooting down a straw but we're waiting on some big mature does to come in tonight on these food plots. She's a big one. Actually, there's several. There's two big does in there, and they're following there. Mm. Either one of them would work. Well, we got settled into the blind, and it wasn't long, and the deer started showing up. You know, one thing you don't want to make a mistake in doing is shooting a button bug. So we took our time, and we glassed them, and we looked at these deer, and we were looking for a mature deer, one of those really nice, big, mature, long-nosed nannies.
dying in the smoke. <laughs> we just shot a nice doe and this has been a blast here with Nathan and the guys. I always have fun with the Old Ridgeland Company and they've got some great properties here and this property is just perfect habitat for holding deer and they've got them here. We saw we had a mature doe, nice long nose on her. She's gonna eat real good. So let's go take a look. <laughs> you never know when you're shooting these muzzle loaders. That white smoke just engulfs you and you can't really tell the reaction of the deer and what she did, so you just have to hope that your shooting was good and it looks like it was pretty decent. She ran, what do you think, about 150 yards, 200 yards? Yeah, I think so. Well, we have meat on the ground and the scenery is beautiful. The deer are plentiful. I really appreciate it, man. We're always happy to have Carolina all out. Well, I appreciate Old River and Company for having us out here. And look, you've got to try what we're doing here in the mountains of North Carolina. We took a turkey with Nathan at Old River and Company, and now we're taking a, a nanny doe, and uh, she's beautiful. I am. Sure I mean, we're gonna have some good meat with this guy. Don't go away, there's more Carolina All Out coming up. Hi, I'm John Shaw, state deer biologist with the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission. Today we're gonna to talk to you about the peak of the rut across North Carolina and some of the unique variation that we have here in this state. In North Carolina, we have five deer season zones, the Northeast, Southeast, central, northwestern, and western deer zones. And the peak of the rut is, is uniquely different in each one of those zones, occurring in late October, early November in the southeastern zone, mid-November in the northeast zone, mid to late November in central and northwestern zones, and in late December in some places in western North Carolina. We're really blessed to have a, a diversity of peak rut activity across the state. So if you're a hunter and you're willing to travel, you have an opportunity to hunt and hit the peak rut across the entire state over a two to three month period. And that really is the basis for why we have five different season zones in North Carolina and why we stagger the opening dates of our black powder and our gun seasons across the state to, to try to capture some of that variability we see in, in breeding dates across the state. For more information about timing of the rut in the area that you hunt, please visit the website below. It's February and the regular season has been over for more than a month, but the urban archery season is in full swing and Chris is in his home county with crossbow in hand to target a city deer. He's hunting an old home place that has stayed undeveloped while the city built around it. Properties like this exist across the landscape of North Carolina that are perfect habitat for deer and are waiting to be discovered by the adventurous bow hunter. Surrounded by urban activity, Chris is perched in an ancient white oak that has witnessed man's progress for over 100 years. Well, tied in here. It's a funny thing, all this that's going on. I got helicopters over top. Heard a car door slam over here not far away. It's just a whole lot going on in the afternoons in an urban setting. So this is a, a really good learning experience for us because we've never done this before with a crossbow, with the urban archery season, and with donating to the hun Hunters for the Hungry. So this is a really good time for us. And we're gonna kind of get locked in here and, uh, and hopefully a deer will show up. When you're hunting inside of a city limits, you think that the deer don't care that much about human sin and they're not worried about human activity and all the other things. And so you can be a little sloppy and you don't have to worry about your scent. Couldn't be further from the truth. These deer are cagey. They spend their lives avoiding people. And so they can tell 
when the human scent of a person on his back porch, which is maybe 100 yards away, and the human scent of someone in a tree stand that's maybe 30 yards away. And we had some does that came in and just completely avoided us. I'm not sure, I thought the wind was good, but these does did not come in. Carolina All Out is brought to you by the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission. Go hunt, go fish, go wild. Carolina Cooker Cast Iron Cookware, a tradition born in the South. XGO, those who know, wear XGO. Montgomery Community College, educating since 1967. Agri-Supply since 1962 and by Browning Trail Cameras. Faster, smaller, better. Don't go away, there's more Carolina All Out coming up. Welcome to Appetite for the Outdoors. I'm Chef Chad McIntyre. We've got a really fun, easy recipe for you guys today featuring some deer tenderloin or backstrap. We're gonna be featuring the Kamado Grill from Carolina Cooker. It's only four ingredients in this. We've got some butter. We've got about a cup of light brown sugar, a cup of soy sauce, and then we've got about a tablespoon of the Carolina Cooker Hickory Barbecue Mix. Set this pot on the grill. We're gonna get this guy melted. All right, so now that the sauce is actually kind of melted down and incorporated, what we're gonna do is reserve about half of it and reduce that again. That's gonna be kind of the dipping sauce that goes in on this using our two quart sauce pot here on a cooker. We're just gonna set this one off to the side. So we got our salt and pepper marinated deer. We're gonna go ahead and get it marked. We're gonna give it about 20 seconds on each turn and do a half turn and then flip it over and do about another 20 seconds. So it is gonna go back on and get cooked to temp. We're gonna do what we kind of call a dip and flip. All right, so the deer's ready. You wanna let it rest for a minute, which gives the sauce another couple minutes to kind of reduce and really thicken up. So now that we've let the deer rest for about five minutes, we're gonna go ahead and slice it and get it ready to serve. So now we're just gonna finish it off with a little bit of the sauce reduction that we made out of the basting sauce. And this is it. You can serve it with a side or you can eat it how it is like this. And it's great when you're able to take wild game out in the field, but it's even better when you're able to incorporate it into a meal. <laughs> it's amazing how far he could drop. He was relaxed, but again, these deer inside the city limits, they are cagey. And so when I squeezed the trigger and that arrow went off, 
he got down and he almost got underneath it. What I'm saying is, is I'm here to take a deer in the urban archery season and we did it with this mission crossbow and I'm tickled as I can be about it. Let's take a look at it. Well, we have our first urban archery deer down here in North Carolina. There's a lot of firsts that's going on in this show. We're gonna have my first crossbow deer, my first urban archery deer, and then we're gonna have our first deer that we've ever donated to Hunters for the Hungry. So I'm extremely excited about all of these firsts in this show. Well, we're gonna get these over to Guy and Judy Gardner's place and show you what it takes to turn a deer in to the Hunters for the Hungry to help those less fortunate than us. All right, let's go. So after we loaded the deer up, we called Guy and Judy Gardner down in Lillington, North Carolina, and they run the Harnet Area Deer Donation Site, and they do a phenomenal job in taking deer that the public brings to them and checking them in and doing some samples and then taking the deer to have them donated to local food banks across the state. This is an awesome program, and I would advise anyone to go there and donate their deer. This was my first shot at urban archery season. It was a lot of fun, it was a lot of challenges, and it was harder than I actually thought. The deer were a lot smarter than I thought they would be inside the city limits, and I'm a believer now that I've got to do everything right to get a deer during this time. But I'll be back. I'm going to do this again. Nathan, the afternoon. I'm yes, sorry. I know. I did die. That's fine. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's fine. We'll do it again. Okay. Right. I'm on about a 300. I'm sorry. <laughs> you had me laugh. At the end of the day, it is a high tech. Daisy. Ah!